Hello everyone, your radar contact and welcome to another VAS Aviation video. Welcome to Mass and Balance and today we're going to go through some of the basic weights that we use in aviation, especially those that are more frequently used in the ATPL and PPL examination. So, as always, grab your pen, take your notes, and let's do it. We'll be advised these weights we're going to mention here are only those more frequently used weights in the examinations, but there are many more other weights or masses. Uh, for this purpose, even though we know that the weight, that weight and mass are not the same for this purpose and for these explanations, we're going to consider those words as being the same, okay? But I usually use a mass for, for this purpose. Well, the first weight or mass that we're going to see is the basic empty mass. And the basic empty mass of an aircraft is the mass of the aircraft as it is. It means the airframe, the engines of the aircraft, the uh, fire extinguishers, that is standard equipment. Also, the oil and the fuel that is contained inside the aircraft, that unremovable fuel and oil that is inside of the pipes of the aircraft, those are included in the basic empty mass. Next we have is the dry operating mass. And the dry operating mass of an aircraft is the basic empty mass plus the crew and the optional equipment. The crew also includes their baggage. Whatever their baggage is, is included in the crew. And also the optional equipment, such as the catering, the food, beverages, Everything is included in the optional equipment. So, basic empty mass plus the mass of the crew and their baggage and the optional equipment gives the dry operating mass. Well, next thing we need to fly is passengers. So, the dry operating mass plus passengers, which is called traffic load, will give a new mass which is called and it's very this mass here is very important for engineering and for aircraft performance the dry operating mass plus the traffic load which is passengers and their baggage and also whatever cargo we have on board is the zero fuel mass also called and uh, many times I'm sure you have seen this, the zero fuel weight or the maximum zero fuel mass or the, or the maximum zero fuel weight that is for engineering and performance purposes. So the dry operating mass plus the passengers and their, and their baggage and whatever cargo we have on board, which is the traffic load, will give the zero fuel mass. Now next thing we need to fly, and keep in mind I said to fly, is fuel, but not whatever fuel. The fuel we need to fly is the takeoff, I'm sorry, the takeoff fuel. There are many more fuel quantities that we take in account in aviation. But, as I said, the next thing we need to fly is the takeoff fuel. The takeoff fuel is the takeoff quantity that we have on board at the moment of takeoff, which is when we are going to start um, being airborne and being flying. So, the zero fuel mass plus the takeoff fuel will give another mass, which is the takeoff mass. Now we'll move 
over to the left side. From the dry operating mass, next thing we need to fly, we don't have passengers anymore, so we're gonna do it the other side around, the other way around. The dry operating mass plus the fuel, and remember that our fuel is the takeoff fuel. So the dry operating mass plus the takeoff fuel will give another mass. And now keep in mind for you to remember and memorize better this diagram and this all, all these masses. Keep in mind this dry operating mass. So when we include fuel, the aircraft is not dry anymore because we have fuel which is a liquid. Just for you to memorize and better remember this diagram. So if we include fuel which is a liquid, the aircraft will not be dry anymore. So the next mass, the dry operating mass, plus the take of fuel is as simple as operating mass. We just removed the dry because the aircraft is not dry anymore. So plus the take of fuel without the dry, without the D from dry, the new mass is operating mass. Now, same as earlier, next thing we need to fly is passengers. So from the operating mass plus the traffic load, which is again passengers and their baggage and cargo, will give the takeoff mass. Now there's another mass, another weight, or another load in between operating mass and the zero fuel mass, and that is the useful load, which is right in the center of this diagram. And the useful load is the sum of the takeoff fuel and the traffic load only. So that's why it's called useful load, which is what we need to fly and to get money from that flight. We have passengers who pay for that flight and we have fuel to perform that flight. So that is the useful load, only the sum of the traffic load mass, whatever mass is it, it is, and the takeoff fuel. Now when we start flying, first of all we have a mass on the gate and that mass is called the ramp mass. And that ramp mass is the actual weight or mass of the aircraft when it is set at the gate, sitting at the gate. Now, how can we get from the ramp mass, ramp or also called block mass? Now, we'll go into that in just a second. How can we go from ramp mass to takeoff mass? Well, we have to burn some fuel to move from the ramp to the takeoff position, and that is the taxi fuel. And I have to make a note here. Uh, the taxi fuel theoretically would only include the fuel from the moment to, from when you start taxiing to the moment when you start a takeoff. Just consider now the takeoff fuel. Now for, this pur for the purpose of this diagram, be advised, this, take this taxi fuel will also include all the fuel consumed before moving the aircraft. That means the APU fuel, if you don't have a GPU to be connected to, uh, you have to turn on start your APU so you're consuming some fuel and when you start your engines even being stopped imagine you're in uh, sitting at a, at a remote stand so you turn on your APU to start your electrics and uh, all the systems and then you start your engine you're not even moving you're not even um, pushing back your your gate but you're still consuming some fuel that is considered as well as taxi fuel so, the ramp mass minus 
whatever taxi fuel we have calculated and we have consumed will go to the takeoff mass. Now there's one last mass that we have in our diagram and that is the landing mass. And again, I want to make a note about this landing mass. The landing mass is considered as the actual mass of the aircraft at the moment of landing, whatever you're landing, because you can be landing at your destination or you can be landing at your alternate airport if you have diverted for whatever reason. But for the purpose of this diagram, again, for the purpose of the learning objectives that ATPL wants from us, this landing mass on this diagram and for most of the exercises and questions from the question banks, this landing max mass is the landing mass at our destination. So how can we get to that landing mass? Where, well, we have a takeoff mass at the moment of the takeoff on our departure airport, and now we have to burn some fuel. And that fuel we're burning is the trip fuel. And again, we have many more other fuel quantities like the contingency uh, fuel, the alternate fuel, and many others. But for the purpose of this diagram and for the exercises from the ATPL again, this landing mass is considered as the takeoff mass minus what we burn during flight, which is the trip fuel, and will give the landing mass. And just memorize, keep in mind, take a imaginary shot of this diagram because it is very, very useful for the exercises. Now it's time to put that diagram into practice with some exercises and questions that I have extracted from the question banks. The first one says, the basic empty mass of an aircraft is 30,000 kilos. We start taking notes of our data and information. The basic empty mass of our aircraft, of our aircraft is 30,000 kilos. The masses of the following items are, the catering is 300 kilos, I'm going to say just food, is 300 kilos. The crew is 600 kilos. The trip fuel, which is trip for me, is 1,200 kilos. The unusable, unusable fuel, which for me will be UF, unusable fuel, is 30 kilos. And the traffic load, which is TL, is 2,500 kilos. They're asking for the dry operating mass. What is the dry operating mass of this aircraft? Well, if we go back on our diagram, we know that the dry operating mass is the basic empty mass plus the crew plus the optional equipment, which includes the catering, nothing else. Do we need the trip fuel to get to our dry operating mass? No, we don't. Do we need the use unusable fuel to get to our dry operating mass? No, because this unusable fuel is already included in the basic empty mass which we have. Do we need the traffic load at all to get to our dry operating mass? No, we don't. So, our dry operating mass, the dry operating, I'm sorry, dry operating mass is the BEM plus the crew plus the food, which is 30,000 300, 30,000 
900 kilos. And again, always remember with the exercises and questions, you have to know what they're asking for, what they give you, and what you need. Because this unusable fuel, you might uh, tam, tend to fall into the trap of including these 30 kilos too here. But no, because this unusable fuel is already, as I mentioned earlier, this unusable fuel is the fuel contained in the fuel pipes of the aircraft. Unremovable fuel and oil is included in the basic empty mass, which we already have. Now for the second question, I'm going to give you a few seconds for you to try do it yourself. I will just take notes of the data and information that they give us. I have it here from the question banks as always. So we have some information and they say we have a zero fuel mass of 4920 kilos. The trip fuel is 880 kilos. The block, which is the ramp fuel, is 1330 kilos. And the taxi fuel is 25 kilos. They want to know what the actual takeoff mass of the aircraft is. So, while I remove the rest of the um, previous exercise, I want you to try, with this information, to try to find the takeoff mass, if you may, please. Five seconds left. Well, how can we get to the take of mass with the information that we have on hand? Well, again, if we memorize and remember our diagram, we can get to the take of mass from four different positions and locations on our diagram. First of all, from left to right and up to down. We can get from the operating mass to the take of mass if we know the traffic load, which we don't. We can get to the take of mass on the right side of our diagram. If we know the zero fuel mass, which we have, and the take of fuel. Next, we can get to the take of mass from the ramp mass and the taxi fuel, and we'll get to the take of mass. And also, we can get to the take of mass if we have the landing mass and the trip fuel. What of that information do we have on hand? Well, we have the zero fuel mass and we have some fuel information. Let's try to find it. First of all, we have the zero fuel mass, which is great. But if we go from the side from the zero fuel mass, we need to take a fuel, which we don't have, but we can find. Because we know that the take of fuel is the block fuel minus the fuel we burn during taxi. It's pretty easy. The block fuel minus the taxi fuel will give a 1,305 kilos, and this is the takeoff fuel. Now that we have the takeoff fuel, we can go back to our diagram, and we know that the takeoff mass will be the zero fuel mass plus the take of fuel. So the zero fuel mass of our aircraft is 4,920 kilos. And this is the zero fuel mass. We sum up. This will be 5, 2, 2, 1, 6. 6,225 kilos take of mass is the answer of the question.
Well, for this very last question, it is a little bit more tricky, but still very easy and simple if we go through our diagram. Again, they give some information and they say the basic empty mass of our aircraft is 1,764 pounds. The optional equipment is 35 pounds. The pilot plus the passenger is 300 pounds. The cargo of our aircraft, cargo we have on board, is 350 pounds. The ramp fuel, I would say block, because it's also stated in the question, stated, ramp fuel and block fuel, remember it's the same. The block fuel is 60 gallons. The trip fuel is 35 gallons. The taxi fuel is 1.7 gallons. And the final reserve fuel is 18 gallons. The fuel density of this fuel is 6 pounds per gallon. And now they're asking for the expected, what is the expected landing mass of this aircraft? Now the first thing we need to notice is that the fuel they give is given in volume and not in weight. So we have to convert that fuel from volume to weight and how? With the density. How cool from them they give us, they give us the density because there are many exercises which you have to kind of know what density that each fuel has. So we have our fuel in volume and we have a density to convert. The only thing we have to do is just multiply to convert the fuel from volume to weight. So 60 times 6 is 360 pounds. Uh, 35 times 6 is 210 pounds. 1.7 gallons times 6 is 10 pounds approximately. And final reserve fuel, which is 18 gallons times 6, is 108 pounds. Now how cool, now we have everything in pounds, we can start working out and playing with the information that we have on hand. Now they're asking for the landing mass, how can we get to the landing mass with the information we have? We know that the landing mass is the takeoff mass minus the trip fuel. We have the trip fuel. Now how can we get to the takeoff mass because we don't have it? We know that the takeoff mass, we, we can get to the takeoff mass from two different locations, from the operating mass on the left side or from the zero fuel mass on the right side. We know the BAM of the aircraft. And we know the optional equipment and the pilot. The, the thing here is they don't, they don't differentiate between pilot and passenger weights. They're both included in the same weight information. So we have to go to the right side of the diagram because we know the BAM, we know the optional equipment, the passenger and the cargo are the traffic load and we know the pilot which will be in the dry operating mass. So if we sum up all these weights, we'll get to the zero fuel mass. So, with your permission, I will use the calculator just to be quicker. 1,764 plus 35 plus 300 plus 350 is 2,449 pounds. And this is the zero fuel mass, zero fuel mass. Now, how can we get from the zero fuel mass 
to the takeoff mass? Well, we know that the takeoff mass is the zero fuel mass plus the takeoff fuel, which we don't have, but we can find very easily, same as earlier. We know that the takeoff fuel is the block fuel minus what we burn during taxi. So the takeoff fuel is 360 minus 10, 350. 350 pounds is the takeoff fuel. If we sum up these two quantities, it's nine, this is nine, seven, and two. 2,799 pounds is the takeoff mass of our aircraft. There's only, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, there's only one more step left to get to the landing mass. We know that the landing mass is the takeoff mass minus the fuel we consume during trip, which we have. So, 210 pounds is the trip. If we deduce 210 from 2,799, which is the mass our aircraft has at the moment of takeoff, we have 9, 8, 5, and 2. 200, 2,000, sorry, 2,589 pounds landing mass is the answer for this question. So as I said at the beginning of the video, this diagram does not include all the weights that we use in aviation, but it is very, very helpful and useful. And it was for me when I was studying for ATPL. It is very helpful and useful to go through most of, um, I would say 85, 90% of the questions from the ATPL and you will go successfully through them if you use it. So as always, if you have any suggestions, any questions or any comments of any kind, just let me know in the comments. So that's it. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.